Hello, Heights Church. It's so good to see you again. My name is Lisa Johnson, and I get to continue our thread in the Summit Up series on devotionals on leadership. This is a fabulous series, and for those of you who think you're not a leader, you've only just begun. Um, leaders step up when others call on them. So I get to talk today about the story of Deborah, and I'm going to be reading or talking about the story and summarizing it from Judges 4 and Judges 5 in the Old Testament. So I really enjoy reading leadership examples in the Bible. I've served often in my life in leadership roles. So this um, devotional thread really um, grabbed my interest personally. Um, the Bible has a lot of examples. It is the book for us to go to when we want to model ourselves after the way God intended. Deborah is a leader that I really admire. Her leadership exemplifies um, qualities that we should all aspire to as leaders. So she lived in the time of the judges. She was a judge, so she's referenced in the Old Testament book, The Judges. And the way the story goes, Deborah helped lead the Israelites against the Canaanites. And the Canaanites had been terrorizing the Israelites for over 20 years. So inspired by God, truly, Deborah aided her friend, Barak, who was a military leader for her side, the Israelites, and they went out to lead the armies of Israel in an all-out assault on the Canaanites. They were able to defeat them and defeat their leaders, and then the Israelites were able to live in peace for 40 years. So, great story, but whoa, a woman in battle. So, you know, Mulan and Dizzy, you weren't the first to do it. But back to Judges. So Judges 5, 7 is really good. So I'll read that verse. Villagers, this is Deborah speaking. Villagers in Israel would not fight. They held back until I, Deborah, arose, until I arose a mother in Israel. So yes, Deborah went to battle. So we're not quite certain based on biblical words, uh, why she was appointed a judge. She's the only female recorded in biblical history in this type of leadership capacity. So it certainly wasn't common. There's no explanation given. Um, it's clear that this generally was a role that a man would fulfill, but she was also a prophetess. She was described as wise. Um, she was definitely approachable. As the Bible says, the people of Israel sought her out. She was clearly sensitive to God. She listened and she helped her friend Barak. So she was a leader, two leaders. She accompanied him in battle. Now it didn't say that she fought in battle, but she accompanied him in battle and she continued to instruct him in chapters four and five. So she was courageous. She ran towards the battle, not away from it. But the really honorable thing was this. When the battle was over, she gave the praise to God. That, my friends, is one of the largest things as leaders that we can do. It is not by our might or our skill set alone that we accomplish things. It is by the gifts that come from God. She was equipped. You know, um, she was a wife and she worked in non-traditional times. She needed to do what she needed to do and she stepped up and did it. And I think that all of us have had to do that to some extent in these recent times. Um, I've been a woman leader my whole life um, from the time I was a little girl, just is wired into me. It's a type of person that I am. I was the first woman student body president at my junior college uh, 40 years ago. I went on to attend UC Berkeley and work in the Women's Center in a season where that wasn't a very popular thing. And that doesn't make me a woman's liver, whatever that is. It makes me a womanist because I know that God created me so uniquely and differently one of a kind, just like you are one of a kind. Wherever you work, whatever you do, you're going to work with people who are different from you, but you have unique abilities, attributes, callings, giftings, skills, knowledge, wisdom than the people that are next to you. So when I stopped trying to be something that I wasn't and I leaned into who God created me to be, I knew I was equipped personally to be a leader. So God calls all of us to love him, to love others, and to lead according to his word. Church culture has changed. Women are more involved in church leadership than ever before. And I think that's a wonderful thing because more than half of our churches are women. These are challenging times. And if you are receiving the challenge of being called to lead, don't buy the devil's lies that you're not enough. You are more than enough. 
You are perfectly and wonderfully made. And as he said in the Psalms, he knit you together in your mother's womb. You are perfectly and wonderfully made. So I thank you, God, for these examples of leadership, encouragement, inspiration. And so now, you guys, I'll leave you with this. One of my favorite verses, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So just do it.